Welcome back to the language of terpenes, limonene and the psychology of energy, chemistry, perception, and cultural identity. The moment a jar opens and that sharp citrus scent rushes out, the mind begins reacting long before the smoke ever reaches the lungs. That bright snap of lemon, orange, or tangerine is powered by limonene, a terpene that's as common as it is misunderstood. It lives in cannabis, but also in rosemary, juniper, and citrus peels, nature's signal for freshness and vitality. Limonene doesn't just define aroma, it shapes emotion. It's the invisible note that tells the body to wake up, to breathe deeper, to feel alive. Chemically, limonene is a monoterpene hydrocarbon, a lightweight compound built from two isoprene units designed by nature to evaporate fast and carry information through scent. It exists in two mirrored forms, D-limonene, responsible for that bright citrus uplift, and L-limonene, which leans more towards resin and pine. Cannabis tends to favor the D form, the same molecule that makes a lemon smell ripe and clean. When inhaled, its signal bypasses conscious processing and goes straight to the limbic system, the brain's emotional core. That's why a single breath of citrus can shift mood instantly. Scent doesn't ask for permission, it delivers feeling. When people call a strain energetic, they're often describing limonene's emotional trigger rather than its pharmacology. The association between citrus and energy has been wired into human survival for millennia. To early humans, brightness meant food, warmth, daylight, life itself. The nervous system still recognizes that cue. When a limonene-rich cultivar like Super Lemon Haze or Tangier hits the air, the body doesn't wait for THC to act. It reacts to memory, releasing subtle surges of alertness and curiosity. The aroma sets the expectation, and the expectation sets the tone of the high. The chemistry that follows is subtle, but powerful. Limonene behaves like a neurological primer, preparing the emotional landscape for cannabinoids to work within. It influences serotonin and dopamine signaling indirectly, shifting how CB1 activation feels once THC arrives. Under its influence, the body interprets intensity as brightness instead of chaos. What people call daytime energy is often the mind recognizing harmony between scent and chemistry, a return to equilibrium framed as motivation. Outside of cannabis, limonene shows the same pattern. In aromatherapy and clinical studies, simple inhalation of citrus oil has been linked to elevated mood and reduced stress markers. It's not a sedative or stimulant, it's an environmental cue teaching the body how to feel safe and awake in the same breath. Cannabis magnifies that language. By pairing limonene's emotional suggestion with the ECS's chemical dialogue, the plant translates aroma into perception with uncanny precision. Modern branding turned that instinct into a marketing code. Sativa became shorthand for citrus, indica for earth and musk, as if the nose alone decided function, but the truth runs deeper. The scent of limonene doesn't give energy. It reminds the brain of what energy feels like. That's why the high often matches the memory, because the body isn't obeying the label. It's recognizing a familiar signal written into its own biology. The chemistry of limonene begins in the air, but ends in the brain. When that scent hits the nose, it moves fast. Molecules traveling through the olfactory bulb straight to the amygdala and hippocampus the centers for emotion and memory. It doesn't wait for logic or interpretation. It arrives as feeling. That's why the smell of lemon or orange can lift mood almost instantly. Before cannabinoids ever activate a single receptor, the nervous system has already started adjusting tone, heart rate, alertness, even breath, as if bracing for light. Once inhaled into the lungs or absorbed through vaporized oil, Limonene crosses easily into the bloodstream. It's lipophilic, meaning it blends smoothly with fat molecules and passes through cell membranes with ease. In the liver, it's processed by CYP2C9 and CYP2C19, the same metabolic pathways used to break down, to down THC and CBD. That overlap matters. When limonene enters the system first, it can subtly alter the timing of cannabinoid metabolism sometimes extending the onset, sometimes quickening it, 
depending on each person's enzyme activity and physiology. The result is one of the most personal experiences in cannabis. The same flower that feels clean and focused for one person might hit another like a rush of static. At the level of receptors, limonene acts less like a switch and more like a tuner. It doesn't bind to CB1 or CB2, but it shapes the environment they operate in. It modulates 5-HT, 1A serotonin and adenosine, A2A receptors, both of which govern stress, attention, and calm. When limonene nudges these systems, the brain becomes more receptive to cannabinoids without amplifying their intensity. This is why a limonene-rich cultivar can feel lighter even with the same THC percentage as a heavier, myrcene-dominant one. The body isn't just processing cannabinoids, it's processing the emotional context they arrive in. The endocannabinoid system responds in kind. CB1 activation in the brain can express as calm, stimulation, or introspection, depending on surrounding neurotransmitter tone. If limonene raises serotonin and dopamine levels, CB1's influence tilts toward focus and uplift rather than sedation. The chemistry doesn't create euphoria, it refines it, helping the ECS interpret signals with more clarity. THC alone can overstimulate the system. Limonene gives it rat rhythm. Expectation deepens this effect. The human brain is predictive, not reactive. It builds the experience before it happens. The scent of citrus primes the sensory network to expect brightness. When cannabinoids engage, the mind completes that pattern, aligning chemical reality with psychological anticipation. This phenomenon, the merging of suggestion and sensation, is what modern researchers call psychosensory entrainment. The body and mind move in agreement because they believe the same story. Scientific studies mirror what culture has known for centuries. Controlled experiments on limonene vapor have shown reductions in cortisol, increases in dopamine turnover, and improved markers of attention in both animal and human models. Yet, these effects vanish when the scent is removed or replaced with a neutral control. The molecule itself is not energy. It's the signal for it. In cannabis, that signal doesn't replace cannabinoids. It frames them. When limonene meets THC, the chemistry becomes a dialogue between scent and signal, one shaping how the other is felt. What people describe as clarity, motivation, or inspiration isn't magic or placebo. It's a physiological conversation between molecules and memory. The endocannabinoid system listens, interprets, and reflects the tone limonene sets. That's why some highs feel like sunrise and others like fog. The plant speaks in chemistry, but perception translates it into emotion. Limonene simply reminds the system what light feels like. What limonene teaches us is simple but profound. Cannabis is not a single note experience. It's a language written in chemistry, translated by the senses, and remembered by the mind. That burst of citrus is more than aroma. It's communication between biology and emotion, a message from nature reminding the body how to feel it alive. Energy doesn't come from the molecule, it comes from recognition. When limonene enters the air, it doesn't give the body something new. It wakes up something that was already there. This is what separates awareness from assumption. The cannabis industry trained us to believe in labels, indica, sativa, hybrid, as if feeling could be predicted by a word or a number. But limonene shows that perception isn't measured by potency. It's sculpted by chemistry and context. The same percentage on a label can tell two completely different stories depending on how the body listens. Education is what bridges that gap. It's what takes cannabis from a commodity back to a craft and from a product back to a plant. To everyone who's walked this far with me, thank you. Every conversation, every share, and every moment spent learning keeps this mission alive. The goal was never to sell belief. It's to restore understanding. When people learn how cannabis truly interacts with their biology, they stop chasing labels and start building relationships with the plant. That's where progress begins. Not in numbers, but in nuance. If you found value in this, know that you're part of something bigger than a series. You're helping rebuild cannabis literacy, 
one honest conversation at a time. Keep questioning, keep observing, and most of all, keep learning. The truth of cannabis isn't found in the loudest claim. It's found in the quiet moment between breath and awareness, where chemistry meets memory and becomes understanding. This content is intended solely for educational and informational purposes. It does not offer medical advice, diagnosis, or recommendations for consumption. Everyone's response to cannabis varies based on biology, environment, and tolerance. Always follow the cannabis laws and regulations where you live and consume responsibly. Scent is memory, memory is chemistry, and understanding, that's the real high. Thank you for watching, for learning, and for being part of this journey. Until next time, stay curious, stay grounded, and keep breaking the myths.